All right, so we are at the Armed Forces Museum in Kumasi, correct? Now, this is my boy, Abdul. Abdul, say hello to everybody. <laughs> say, hello, say hello to everybody in America. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Good, good, good. All right, so we're just going to take our tour. This is our tour guide. Yes. So, first of all, you see, sorry. Uh, Go ahead. It's a, it's a doctor message. This is a message about the monument. Okay. English, French. Your guide is here. So, after you read this one, you read it to us. I bring your ticket. Okay. Have a okay. Nice All right. Hi. How are you, guy? Uh, fine. Say hello to everybody. Hello. Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Holy Ghana Falls. Okay. Okay. We're going to start our tour, and this place is the military museum, as we all know. Is this for all of Ghana or just Kumasi? All of Ghana. Oh, okay. It's the only military museum you can get in Ghana. Okay. Okay. So we're starting our tour. This place was first the palace of the Asantes. It wasn't a museum. So it was that time the then king was Nana Tutu Kwamina and Sibe He was then the king. After this place was used for what? The, the Asante Palace. The British were at our coastal areas, which is Cape Coast, Tema, and all the territories of Africa. So <coughs> the king, Nana. The king was trading at Cape Coast, so he wanted to build this place the same as Cape Coast Castle. So he ordered the men he went with to carry granite and stones from their, on their head. They walked to this place two weeks, spending two weeks, barefooted. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? They were very strong, you know? Yeah. So this place is built 80 meters square, 3 feet wide, and 13 feet high. Okay. So you can see how the building is. We have four observation posts over here. This place was used as a museum in 1952. So this place, we have the World War I, World War II, equipment and guns, rifles, a whole lot of machine guns. Oh, oh, hold on, you guys. Hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. All right, go ahead. Sorry about that, you guys. Go ahead. Okay. So as this place was the palace, I was saying, that time the British were colonizing. So in 19, 1897, this place was well reconstructed. You hear? Mm -hmm. So this place was used as the boys' company, the military. They were training the military okay. over here. Now, that did was I, the Gold Coast. Okay. Let me ask you. So during World War One and World War Two, were there Ghanaian troops that fought? Yes, in the, please. Uh huh. Ghanaians didn't fight on our own. We fought for the British. Right. Very good. Okay. And we fought against World War One against the German. Mm -hmm. We fought a German Tugoland, Cameroon, and some even some territories of East Africa campaign. Uh -huh. We went to Second World War. The Second World War, we fought against the Italians and the Japanese. Right. We fought against the Italians in 1939 to <coughs> 45. You know what's, you know in history, okay. they omit uh -huh. the uh, contribution of Africans to World War One or World War II. Yeah. You just think it's just all Europeans that uh, that fought in the war. That Africans, Indians in India, that they didn't fight on behalf of the British. That is why we fought with the Japanese right. at India. Uh huh. Burma close to India. Uh huh. You see? Yeah. Yes. And we were able to defeat them as well. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine that? The Ghanaian soldiers were very strong, very brave. That is why the British believe in them. Right. We were training them in such a way that they can fight for them. Right. So we can go inside and see some of the equipment, a whole lot of rifles, machine guns that yeah. was captured. Okay. From the World War One and World War Two. Okay. You know, we have Ghana, we also joined the peacekeeping in 1960, and Ghana, we are still, our soldiers are still among the UN, United Nations. Okay. We joined in 1960, and we are still, we've gone to so many countries, more than 30 countries for peacekeeping. The dangerous peacekeeping was Rwanda. Our first peacekeeping, which is in 1960, was Congo. So we will go inside and see more about what you want to see by here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so this is our first room that has been displayed 
so many good cooks. Hi. Okay. So you will start from this place. One one second. Let me grab my light. Okay. It's very uh, dark. I hope I got it in here. That's right here. Abdul, can you do me a favor? Can you hold this light? Just hold it. Okay, you can see this button over here. There are buttons the British during the Good Coast time we were using. Currently, you change all of them. I hope you can see them. Understand. Very good. And this where they are cap badges. You know the soldiers now, if they wear their cap, they have some badge in front. Uh -huh. During the Gold Coast time, we were using this cap badge. It was a palm tree. They believe in palm tree. They know we get so many things from palm tree. We get the oil, mushroom, broom, the whole lot, of, even alcohol. Uh -huh. So they were using this. Also, we gained independence. We had this coat of arm, and this is our current cap badge. So you can see at that time the British were willing us, we couldn't spell Kumasi. They spell Kumasi wrongly. <laughs> we have double S. Right. It's only one S. Right. You can see. So if you see this initial source over here, it was first Gold Coast Local Force. And we went to Gold Coast Regiment before we had West African Frontier Force. King George V had added R. To the RAF, Royal West African Frontier Force, complying of four countries, which is the Gold Coast itself, the Sierra Leone, the Nigeria, and Gambia. Very good. As I was saying, we went to World War One, World War Two, so you can see some of the medals that was given to the soldiers who went to the World War One, World War Two. Mm -hmm. Soldiers don't talk with medals because they've suffered a lot. To get these medals. This science you see here, this the spider, also known as the tarantula, mm -hmm. it was used at the northern command. Now they are used at the central command. This is the shield and a spear. The 81st division and 82nd division. You can see so many medals also over here. So many medals that has been displayed over here. So many medals. So this is a medal of one person. Mm. A medal of one person. The medals will be on your chest. That shows that you've been to this place, you've gone to this place. This were their shoulder titles. They were using as their soldiers. And in the military, we have all kind of job inside. What you are doing, we have so many people inside the military doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So this sign, the E, if you see at the Gold Coast time, if you see any soldier with this, that person is the soldier who can speak English. The E, we have the raffles, cross raffle, bear shooter, the drum. That means, you know, the military, they play drum. That is, that is called the regiment. Mm -hmm. So, so many signs that has been displayed. Okay. We can see this big mortar here. It's the Italian mortar. Because we fought with the Italians. That is why we were able to capture this from the Italians. We also have the Japanese mortar. Because we fought against the Japanese you were able to capture this from here. Yeah, it's just, it, it upsets me when uh, they speak on World War I and World War II history that they completely leave out Africa's contribution. Really? Yeah, they, they never talk about Africans uh, okay, I fighting. Say, you I know, it, like when they do the movies, it's just all the, the, the white people that yeah, fought the British, 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 French, you know, everybody but Africans. They always, they, they completely admit Omit Africans from World War II. But we were the people they were using us to. Right. The Ghanaian soldiers. Uh -huh. They were using the Ghanaian soldiers seriously. Because this place was used to train soldiers. Uh -huh. That was called the Boys Company. 
and the first uh, Ghanaian to command the boys company was Brigadier Michel. We have the picture of Brigadier Michel. He was named after Michel Camp. Okay. So you can see this building that we are inside was the only building that we, from 1952, reconstructed this one. But the old one, the rest, were built by the British, by the King George V engineer, ordered that engineer to build this place. Mm. So you can see, sir, if people don't talk about, let's say, we Ghanaians, we were involved in the World War One or World War Two, maybe probably we don't, we didn't have any interaction with anybody. But just that the British wanted us to fight. Right. That is why they train us to fight uh -huh. for them. So that is why I would say they don't mention Ghanaian's name during, let's say, World War One or World War Two. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we also have this raffles over here. These raffles are Italian raffles. We were able to capture these raffles from the Italians. We have the short raffle and the long raffle. The short for short range, then the long for long range. This officer's ceremonial song. You can see the officers only use sword in place of their command. If you are not an officer, you can't use sword. So during any ceremony, you see the officers with their sword. They, com they communicate or command with a sword, as you can see here. So we have various types of sword. We have the German sword here. We have the Italian sword here. We have the Abyssinia, known as Ethiopia. Uh -huh. We have so many swords that are displayed over here. Yes. We have this cap. You see here, this cap was awarded to one soldier man during the Gold Coast time. You know, so that they do shooting competition. Uh -huh. He was the best shot or the best shooter to give a shot to their light or a target. So he was promoted to Lance Corporal. Mm. Yes, and even currently the best shooter is a female. Oh wow. Yes. That's Things awesome. Changing. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. So we have some of the Japanese, their periscope. Their pistols, their pistol holder, their signal pistol, their cartridge, and another periscope is here. This is how they use it. They, the Japanese were digging trenches. You know, they were hiding inside, they would dig trench uh -huh. and hide inside. Using this periscope, they would look through here to see you on top. So immediately you get close to them, they will just come out and start shooting. Mm. So this was what they were using at Burma, close to India. Uh -huh. We can see this bayonet as well. This bayonet were given to the Ghanaian soldiers to fight against the German and Italians as well as the Japanese. So they are British bayonets. We have the rough bayonet and the smooth bayonet. Uh -huh. The ones opposite here, you get there were captured from the Japanese. Very good. You can see this picture. <coughs> this man is called Nanaku Fijenfi the second. He was part he was part of the soldiers who went to the Second World War. He was part of the soldiers who went to the Second World War. He was having two wives, 36 children. Oh wow. 150 grandchildren, and they are proceeding more. Oh, wow. He was the first man to establish private hotel in Kumasi here. Oh, wow. <coughs> this food here is called Kompo Reaction. This food was given to the soldiers, and it's the food of Nana Kofi the II. Mm -hmm. Every two weeks, the helicopter would drop this food for them at the war front. So they were eating this, but this man didn't eat the food. He was eating a fresh bamboo. Mm -hmm. This man was eating fresh bamboo. He wanted to present this to her mom so that her mom would see the kind of food they've been giving to them at the battlefield. So after the mom looking at this, he presented this to the museum for us to use it to explain things to our people. Yeah. This is a dagger during the regime of Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins. In 81, everybody was supposed to raise up his or her hand whilst walking. 
but this pregnant woman was tired. He placed the hand on her waist, and the soldier man stuck her with this dagger. What soldier man? Ghanaian soldier man uh -huh. at a doomy runways. Okay. Yes. He stuck the woman with this knife, and the woman was dead. Oh wow. So the soldier was in prison, later sacked from the military. Oh wow. Very good. We have so many Italians, water bottles, belt, lanyard, helmet, cap. That was captured from the Italians. Very good. These raffles were also used against the German. We have one, two German raffle, one, two Austria. That was Austria made. Very good. This were their communication set they were using. See, now we have our smartphones. But the soldiers were using this to communicate, to know where they are moving. You know, soldiers, they, they do with maps. <coughs> they do with maps. So this is the engine of the phone. This is the battery. This is the dial, the antenna. So three soldier men will be carrying this, whilst the white man leading them will be using this to communicate, carrying all this. Can you imagine that? Very good. So, just the the light is real dark in here. I'm just trying to get the lighting. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's real. Especially oh, here we go. It's better. There we go. Yeah, it just got real dark for a second. Okay. Okay. So you can see here the first commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. In Ghana, if you become the president, you are the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Uh -huh. So you can see, starting from Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you have General Ankara, General Efifa, the current president, uh -huh. the Kufu Abu. Let me ask you, which, which president organized the coup against uh, Kwame okay. Nkrumah? This man, Efifa and Kotoka, uh -huh. they organized a coup to overthrow Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Why? Why did, they, why did they organize the coup? You know, the militaries, they are the people who can stand up and do anything again in order to overthrow the president. They have their own grievances. Let's say, I don't like you. Uh -huh. You are doing something that me, per se, and my Sudanese, we don't like. So they decided to make the coup in 1966 uh -huh. to overthrow our... Well, what, what, was Nana, what, was Nana, what was Kwame Nkrumah doing that upset the... Uh... Okay. That one, what Kwame Nkrumah was doing, that the soldiers didn't like, uh -huh. I myself, I don't even understand. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Because even currently, we have the CDS, Commander in Chief of the Ghana Armed Force, who appoints the CDS. You know? Uh -huh. The CDS is supposed to be somebody the president trusts, believe that he cannot organize the mess or he will not allow. The men's who tells the so the men to overthrow her ruling or his ruling. So you, you are supposed to give the CDS to somebody you believe, somebody you trust, right. somebody who can control the soldiers. You know the soldiers, they are triceps nature, the navy, the air force, and the army. So every aspect, the soldiers have chief of navy staff, chief of army staff, chief of air force. So the CDS is supposed to control all of them. So the CDS then the general. Mm -hmm. Ankara was the second president, and he was given the position whilst he was on retired uh -huh. by this man, a free fire. You will hear more about them at the uh, uh, what do you call Kotoka Hall. The way they planned the coup, the council members, they, they were involved to plan the coup. You will hear more about that. But this place, they some were not elected. Or some were not voting. Some okay. were cools. You know, Ghana will be into cools. Yeah. So he was not voted. Not voted. Uh -huh. He was voted. He was also not voted. Okay. So we can see a tampon, German a tampon. Uh -huh. Another Ekufu. Uh -huh. Yes. Ghana, they believe in a tampon. Because a tampon's time. They were saying things were flowing. Ghana was on their feet. Uh -huh. Food a whole lot. So Ghana was very enjoyable. It was very enjoyable during the regime of Atampa. 
We have the Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins. Uh -huh. We have President Adekunko for President John Atamos. Uh -huh. And the ex or the past president, which is John Dramani Mahama. That's the president now. Yes, ex president now. Uh -huh. The picture will be here. We dealt with commands. The picture will come from above so that we put it here. The picture is not yet in. That is why we put it. This year to show people that we're having an X. That picture is being displayed over here. We can see this map as well. This map was used by Queen Elizabeth II to visit Ghana in 1961. So straight from he landed Accra, and straight from Accra he went to Temale. From Temale he went to he came to Kumasi here and went back to Accra again. And went back to our coastal areas. So you can see also the map of Kumasi as well, that the British were using over. But currently, we've expanded so many places as well. OK, these were formations that the British were using this to teach the Ghanaian soldiers. If you see somebody dressed like this, that person is your enemy. You can see how they were using the bayonet place the bayonet in front of your gun or your, your rifle. So they were teaching them their enemies. No Ghanaians at that time, they couldn't read and write more. So they were using practically practicals to teach them how to use even the rifles, how to communicate. So the, pic the pictures also over there are pictures showing them how to operate their communication set, how they were training them. Very good. So you can see how they were teaching them how to use the communication set, how they were working on the rope, how they were arranging raffles, how they were mounting so many things. And that was the 1940 to 1941, which is the Italian war, the war we fought against the Italians. These plates were captured from the Italians. Whilst the war was ongoing, the officers, Italian officers, soldiers were chilling they were at a particular place, chilling inside these boats, cheers and stuff. So the Ghanaian soldiers were able to conquer and shoot so many people around that place, and they, were, they captured this place. Very good. So you can see the bayonet I was talking about, that was captured from the Japanese. These are Japanese bayonets. This machine gun you see here is the first automatic machine gun first automatic machine gun that was used by the Ghanaians. The British gave this to us. Oh yeah, perfect. That's great. Yeah, perfect. The light is exactly what we need. We were giving this to them to fight. It's the automatic machine gun and it fires 500 per minute. Wow. Yes. But the soldiers were suffering using this. Why? Because Three people are supposed to use this machine gun. Mm -hmm. One person will be inserting the cartridge, one person will be firing, and one person will be cooling it with water. It gets hot. Uh -huh. So sometimes their water gets even finished. They are on a battlefield, the water is finished. So sometimes they have to reserve their urine in order to urinate on it, uh -huh. to cool it down. Mm -hmm. It was not happening anymore. So they came out with this. This was the mud night of this. Okay. This was firing seven. 100 per minute. You see, this is having a hose, so it drags in air to cool it. So they were, they, 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 they were using this profitable. They choose to like this one. It's also an automatic. And Italians, raffles as well, that was captured. I was telling you this place was a boys company. They were training the soldiers over here. So this was their side post. Gold Coast Regiment, while the British were ruling us, this thing or this side post was placed in front here. So you see this, and you can recognize the soldiers inside here. They will be training them inside here. So you can see, as I was saying, Kumase was spelled wrongly. We have double M, double S. That was not helping. The British couldn't spell Kumase. So this was the samples of the training center over here. We have this to be the original keys and key handles that the British were using over here. All these keys and key handles were... Key handles. Yes. So 
they took only one key away with them. And that key is having a great history. So they left all these keys going with only one key. And that will be the story of our last, uh, the last two, last story to hear about. So we go inside our second room to see so many rifles and machine guns that the British were using and also we captured some from the Japanese. Oh wow. That was given to him 
by Egypt president. Uh -huh. Because the wife, Kwame Nkrumah's right. wife from Egypt. Egypt right. yes. So during the visit, he presented this to Kwame Nkrumah. And this one too was given to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president, by Emperor Hain Salas. Emperor Salas gave this to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah when he visited him. Mm -hmm. A shield, this is not a heart, a shield and a spear. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. From here, we are going to talk about peacekeeping, which is the UN peacekeeping. Okay. Ghana rejoined the peacekeeping in 1960, the UN nation, United Nation. This was a peacekeeping at Liberia, Liberia peacekeeping. Right. We were able to collect all these raffles, detectors, AK-47, you can see here, so many pistols, that was and when, when was this, the Liberia Peacekeeping? What year was it? It's Liberia Peacekeeping. It was in... Uh, okay, back with uh, Charles Taylor. Yeah. Very good. Uh -huh. 1990. Now. Uh -huh. Very good. And we have the Congo being the first peacekeeping we went. Very good. You can see so... Oh, it's a uh, Bakuba. Bakuba mask. That's a Cuba mask. Yeah. Bakuba mask. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. When you see some Congo or huh? Congo, yeah, yes. Bakuba, yeah. They were using this to fight. Who? At that time, it wasn't what you were expecting or what you are saying. Uh huh. They believe a virgin lady or a, oh, sorry, a virgin man uh -huh. is supposed to wear this uh -huh. and lead them through the war. Uh -huh. Whenever he's being shot, uh -huh. that means all of you at the back who are also going to die, so you have to run. Uh -huh. He's been powered by this. It's called the juju or the black magic. Yes. Very good. So oh. it was very powerful. Now they use it to celebrate. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at that time, it was not easy. They were using it for so many things. Oh, okay. okay. So you can see the British were saying Ghanaians or Africans, we can't manufacture raffles. So you can see Congolese raffles. Oh, so Congo, they're making their own weapons. Very good. Oh, wow. So you can see the inside here. Uh -huh. Another box. And what, what were, I'm sorry, what, what, what's, uh, what was this about these uh, Uzis or whatever? This they were is... fighting, peacekeeping. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the UN, the so, that soldiers called the UN, that is why we have the contingent commanders and the commanding officers. Uh -huh. They went, they make sure that peace and order is everywhere. Okay. They are peacekeeping. Yes. So they, they will come as commanding officers, making sure that no fight comes any place. If there is a fight or a war in Ghana here, if there is a war in Ghana here, these people will come and what make sure that there is peace in Ghana. Very good. Yeah. The dangerous peacekeeping, I was saying, is Rwanda genocide. Mm -hmm. This peacekeeping was among two ethnic groups, the Hutus yeah, and the Tutsis. Tutsis right. Very good. Uh -huh. Every hundred days, 8,000 men and women, children were dying. Ghanaian soldiers were part of the peacekeeping. The Sudaman or the leader was Brigadier Aido. He led, not this man, uh -huh. the one here. Uh -huh. Very good. He was the driver uh -huh. of Aido. Very good. So, this were used. They were asking them whether you like your hand long sleeve or short sleeve. This was the catalyst they were using to cut. This was used to take off hairs, to take off a pregnant baby's heart. It wasn't easy. The head bastard, the children, do not use gun on you. You smash your head with this head bastard. Can you imagine that? So the children were dying mercilessly. <coughs> Even the soldiers who went for the peacekeeping were withdrawing. Why? Because the two ethnic groups were fighting the war, the soldiers or the peacekeeping soldiers as well. So the soldiers, so many peacekeepers were drawn, but this man said, No, Canadian soldiers, you are not going back. We are going to see, make sure that there's peace at Rwanda. So this man was very great. He was even a award for doing that. You can see the uniform 
he presented to the museum the boots, the walking stick, as well as a weapon. He was using this. Very good. You can see the caps, the helmet, the hat of the peacekeeper. This is the sign of the peacekeeping, the UN peacekeeping. These they are symbol. Very good. So if you see any soldier with this symbol in front of the cap or any blue helmet, that means it's a UN soldier. And also Cambodia peacekeeping. We were able to collect all this. This is the flag of the Ghana Army. The tri-service nature, the Air Force, Army, and the Navy, they all have their flags. So this flag is for the Army. We have the Air Force. I will show you. We have the Navy. I will show you. So we are going to hear some story about a condemned cell here. That condemned cell was used to kill the what? The Africans or the Asantis. The person or the only person who survived inside that cell was Nanaya Asantua. The queen mother of Ebiso. This Nanaya Santua was very brave, very powerful. He, he even stood up for the Asantis in 1900. That was the Yas Santua War. Why? Right. Why? Because a British man called Frederick Hoxon and the wife came from the British land demanding for the golden stool. The golden stool that binds the Asantis together. So this woman stood up and said, No, we are not going to give you the golden stool. Because the golden stool binds the Ashantis together. It went and went and went on and brought about the 1900 war, which is the Yasantua war. So let's go there and let me show you the cell that Yasantua was kept. Okay. This is the cell called the condemned cell. Okay. So this is where Yasantua was yes, kept. Yes, But first, it was a cell they were using to kill the Ghanaian soldiers or the gun. Not even Ghanaian soldiers, the Asantis. Uh -huh. Where you pass, the gate was the gate of no return. Uh -huh. If you are able to make your way out through this gate to this place, it means you are coming to these two places. This was containing 10, 20 people, and this was containing 10 people. 10 people inside here. They will torture you first before you will be brought here. The British inside train. The Asantes or the Africans inside here were using this place to kill the peoples or the Africans. Africa will kill the brother or the sister Africa inside here. So 10 people inside here before... 10 people in here. 10 people oh. this is a small dance. Wow. If all of you die, and you cost to be sent out in order for them to bury you. And Nanaya Santua was here before he was taken to Cape Coast. They didn't want to kill Nanaya Santua. Why? Because they took Nana Prempe the first, the what the second king of Asantes, to Seychelles Island. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he couldn't comply with a tribute that Nana Kofi Kakari signed with the British that every month. He is going to pay some amount of gold to the British. Can you imagine that? Nana Prempe was a little bit wiser. He went through asking the British, why are we paying this huge amount of gold to you? The British said no, because we have defeated you. We are able to what, colonize Asantes, so you have to pay. So they were paying, and Nana Prempe the first was fed up. He said, you will not pay again. So for that means, the British took him to Seychelles. So while Frederick Hoxton came, they were thinking Frederick Hoxton is coming to give them a feedback of their king they've taken to Seychelles, not knowing he was coming to demand for the golden stool. So they welcomed the British man called Frederick Hoxton. They gave him a seat and said, No, I want the golden stool to sit on. Meanwhile, the king himself doesn't sit on the golden stool. He squats on it three times. So Nana Asantua said, okay, the golden stool is at the bush. So we are going to gather strong men to go into the bush and what? And bring the golden stool. So it went on struggling everywhere. They went and do a replica of the golden stool and gave it to the governor. They sprayed it with some bangles of gold. So the governor, Frederick Hoxton, was saying, oh yes, the Ghanaians are afraid of me. They're giving me what? The golden stool. 
he took the golden stool to the homeland or the British land and realized it was fake. That is why he came back for the Yasantwa War. Now, how, why have you Ghanaians denied me the representative of Queen Victoria for sitting on the golden stool? It brought about Yasantwa War. He was here, he was the only person. He'll be kept here five minutes, he'll be taken out to breathe small air. Small, 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 and... Well, Yaa Asatoa was a woman, right? Yes, woman. Okay, okay. At that time, you know, at the age, she was 65 years. Uh-huh. A woman, 65 years, leading so many big men a war. So, she was taken to Cape Coast and later sent to South Island. So, Yaa Asatoa died at South Island. Mm. Very sad story. So, we are going to hear some story about our Navy. Uh -huh. The Navy, the Navy Hall. So we are going to the Navy Hall. Okay, you can see this hall. This is the Navy Hall. can see the England flag, inside, uh, the Ghana, Ghana flag inside the England flag, meaning the Ghana Navy came from the what? The England Navy. That is why we have their flag. So this flag is for the Navy. The Navy flag is here. We have Chief of Navy Staff, the one who, who uh, let me say, who control all the navies. And the navies, we can see them in Ghana at our coastal area, Thakwadi and Thema. So he was the first chief of Navy staff. He was a white man. The second chief of Navy staff was a Hafkat. The father from Denmark, the mother from Accra. So what do you call him? The, uh, what, do you, what, is, what would you call him? A half what? Uh, I would say Hafkat. Hafkat. Yes, Hafkat. Hafkat, okay. Yes. Aside all the continuous ones were black chief of Navy staff. We have... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, we have this lanterns down inside the ship. You can see them right inside the ship. We have this anchor. This is the main symbol of the Navy. This picture you see over here, President Kofo, the ex-ex-ex-president inside here, was inspecting a parade of what? The officers who were hot passing out. Very good. So many pictures. Inside here too, we have part of the ships. The sphere of the ship, the speedometer, the globe. And this ship here you see is still on our sea. Okay. It's called the Anzoni, the P30. This man designed this for us. Oh. The man over here designed this Anzoni ship. We have a lot on our sea. Very good. This are ceremonial dress of the Navy. We have one, two, three for the officers ceremonial dress. One, two, three for junior rank officers and junior rank ceremonial dress. Sorry. We have the uh, Caps, their boots, and some of the parts inside the ship. This ship you see over here, we have it on our sea. It's called the Achimota ship, the fastest ship. We have two live rafts. One is here, this one. Here is it. Okay. Whenever there's any damage or any dangerous thing happening inside the ship, you will put this on the sea and it will flip like this. It's even bigger than this room. It contains 20 to 24 soldiers. If you are not able to get chance to enter this, you will use the life, life jacket, sorry. He was the first female diver or a woman who joined the Ghana Navy or the first female to dive under the sea. 
you can see the boot here, the oxygen also over here. So you can see that woman, Yabani Mausi, was very brave because you know it's not easy for a male, a female, to join the navy, to go deep, to dive. It's not easy. Yabani Mausi, I congratulate you. She's still alive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, uh, the age I can't tell exactly the age. Yes, because I think for now she's old. She's old. She's old. We are going to our main yas and tour hall. Okay. Here is it. Okay. This is the yas and tour hall. It's not easy to say or confirm what is history. This was the man called Okonfanachi, the man who enjoyed the golden stool from the sky. The golden stool that binds the scientists together. Here is the symbol or a replica that shows the sign while she was conjoined. This was the golden stool he conjoined. It's being carried by a king. It comes out every five years by the king for people to see. That we Ghanaians or we Africans, we the scientists, we still have the golden stool. Is that the real one? They say sometimes they even after every five years they still don't bring out the real one. They still they still bring out the uh, replica. Like they keep the real one, never comes oh, out. Oh, now I know that. <laughs> it can be true because it's not easy. Right. Even now, uh -huh. I would say, say it's very black or something because uh -huh. it's a long time. This picture here. Uh -huh. This is the man called Frederick Hoxon. That's the same picture. He and the wife here, uh -huh. they took this picture. You can see this clearly at the back of this building. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes. Okay. Cool. This is the man. The, 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 the wicked man. The wicked man. Yes. Uh -huh. Here is him. Uh -huh. He was demanding for the goodies to and he brought about the Yasantua war. Mm -hmm. This is our queen mother, the Yasantua. Oh, that's her? Yes, the woman who led the war, who was challenging the British man for the Hoxham. That's no. Uh. How can you white man come and, no, 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 This woman, God, God, God gave this woman to the scientists. Uh-huh. Yes, because 65 years, look at the age. She was old, but the British, do not know why why this woman could meet so many Asantes, mm -hmm. 65 years leading. So they wanted to see whether she was a, a female or a male. That is why they lowered the distance to see whether she's having breasts. Uh -huh. Very good. This is the current king. Okay, this picture is the vice lieutenant Jerry John Rollins. He visited the late Otum for Opokuare funeral. Uh -huh. Yes, so you can see Friday left an Nigerian Rollins at the funeral celebration. This is the picture of our current king, uh -huh. Nana Osetu II, in the Patakari Kessia. The Patakari Kessia is worn two times when they are installing you, and also when they a dangerous war, the king is supposed to wear this. When you are tall, whether you are tall or short, it will touch your nail. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt in that. This is Otum for Opokuware the second. This is Nana Prempe the second. This is Nana Prempe the first, the one the British took to Cecil's Island. For 28 years. The time he was back to a sentiment, he was a Christian, an Anglican, you can see, ah. beside the sea. Ah. Whilst he was in Ghana, you can see the person. Uh -huh. And Past 20 years, 28 years at Sosos. He turned to Christian. Oh. So you can see <laughs> Why? The, the even the the family or the palace, they are all most of them are Anglicans. Right? Because even now? Yes. Oh, oh. Because Why? can can you imagine me? I don't like a king. How can a king dress like this? Yes. Every day you are supposed to be in your king or something. Uh -huh. And now you can see even the current king is sometimes well seat. Uh -huh. It's not supposed, but because of the Christianity he introduced, they applied that. This is the first man called Yaoberima, the first Asante man to join the Ghana Armed Force. 
the first Asante man to wear a suit in 1914. This man, the British were saluting him because he was very uh, wise. He was helping the British in order to translate even English to tree uh -huh. to the Asante. So uh -huh. he was honored. This is Nana Kufi Srebo. Because of the loyalty he paid to the British, they gave the, they gave him this rare silver medal. This is wow. a replica of Nana Yasantua. The woman who led the war in 1900. Very good. So this man, he did betray the This man, yeah, he did betray the Okay, a man who betrayed the Asantis, I would say this man, this man, this elders, okay. they betrayed the Asantis by stealing the gold. They wanted to give the gold to work to the, go, uh, the governor. The governor okay. So they were all killed there, elders. Okay. But this man, he was, he was, he was good. Okay. Like if the scientists need anything to communicate through this man, and this man will take it to the governors. If the governor want to give any information to the scientists through this man, okay. yes. So it's like he was kind. He was kind. Yes. Okay. All these pictures here are pictures of governors who are born in Ghana before. This man here is a governor, Ghanaian salute. Why? Because they are saying this governor was good. He was the governor who gave Ghanaians the railways, big hospitals, and stuff. Sir Gordon, Gorgeous Bell. Yes. Ghanaians were saying me, I was not there, but I'm be, I've been told that this man was very, 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 very helpful to Ghanaians. He gave so many railways to Ghanaians, hospitals, so many huge, huge, huge things. This man provides Ghanaians with. This is cannons. This is the cannons they used to fight the Yaha and Samanko. The one they used, they took off the head of Sir Charles Makati. That is the war. This is the cannons they were using. Yes. This room is a room. That I, I will display, if you look at it down here, so many pictures, how the Ghanaian soldiers were suffering. So you can see World War I, World War II, they were killing so many Ghanaian soldiers. Who were? Who were killing the soldiers? He fought against the German... Oh, the Germans in the... Yes. Okay. So during the war, they took all these pictures. You can see them. Some were dying. They were killing people. Killing the soldiers. see, there's a time of it. One, two, three. During World War II, against the Germans and the Japanese, these were the division commanders. Mm. They were commanding the Ghanaians. They all came back alive. Uh -huh. They were being named after their first name and where they are coming from. That is why we have. Potopoa Dadati, me, he said Dadati, man. They have Sadiq Mosi, Mosi man. Hassan Bazambari, not now. Dogo Yawa, not now. Nazo Kuzanda, not now. Sebi, Nansa, not now. Only fancy man was this man, mm -hmm. Godfrey Saki. He was among the, the Nordness. You can see. At that time, there were no Asante man. The Asantis feared because these people, the Northerners, were very strong. They were very bold. Mm -hmm. You can see the uh, car badge I was showing you at that time. Uh -huh. The car badge, they are on. The car badge. So these are all Northerners? Yes. Uh -huh. Only this man, a fancy man. Very good. Uh -huh. And you can see the shoulder title I was, show, I was telling you. So, I was showing you here. Showing here. Uh -huh. It was used at the Northern Command. Okay. Now at the Central Command. Very good. Mm -hmm. This is the Air Force. But currently, we are having some small problem. But we, let's go there. Okay, okay. It's a small picture of my Okay.
can see the governor or the British man will be standing here uh -huh. to see the Ghanaian soldiers, how they will be operating. Okay. The Ghanaian soldier, you don't have the right to climb here. Uh -huh. No. You will be walking around. You can see, whilst we are going, we have sniper posts around the walls. You have to observe it. You see them. There's a sniper post around everywhere. The British were shooting through those sniper posts to kill the Santis. Because the British were inside here with the trained Ghanaian soldiers and they were shooting. This is the first aeroplane in Kumasi. Hmm. This aeroplane was taken to Kumasi or brought to Kumasi by the Air Force in 1929. Very good. From there, we have various aeroplanes the Air Force were using. So many. These pictures are the first female ladies to join the Air Force. Very good. Inside your picture. This were past, or these are past Chief of Air Force. They were commanding the soldiers, or they were the head of our soldiers, commanding the soldiers. Who works this time? Very good. So, this is the last Chief of Air Force. Mm -hmm. It was the ex. We have the current one. Whenever you go, the man will come. This are also, sorry, Coast okay. soldiers. All of them. So, you can see the flag of the Air Force. I'll show you the flag of the Navy. This is the oh. Air Force. Okay. Very good. So we will go to our flag hall. Okay. That's all the soldiers do respect that hall most. Okay. Because we have the then Ghana flag or the flag the soldiers were using and the current flag. Okay. Okay, so you can descend. You can Yes. Okay, go. Red means the blood that was shed. Very good. Yellow or gold means the wealth. Very good. Green, I guess, would mean the fertile soil, like Very the ground. Oh, uh, the forest. The forest. Yes. And then the black is us, the black people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's true. It's true. It's true. You get it. This flag was also used by the paratroopers. Uh huh. If you say paratrooper, the soldiers they have troops. Uh -huh. Groups, they say troops, paratrooper. So one soldiers or group of soldiers will be carrying this to pass, let's say, the north. And now people will be using this to move at the south. So you can see some names inside the paratrooper flag. The names are names of places Ghana. So the Ghanaian soldiers, we went and fight, or we are fought. Mm. We have, and those names, we've named them after our barras. You can see the Udara barras here, Amina barras, Judah, Fobier, Wadara, so many barras. Juba, that's uh, South Sudan, right? Yes, okay. because we fought over there. Mm -hmm. Very so the barras is named after these places. This coat of arm you see here is the arm force coat of arm. Mm -hmm. It's different from the coat of arm of Ghana. You can see the triceps nature symbols inside here. The two sword claws for the army, the anchor for the navy, then the rings for the air force being mm -hmm. fly. And this is our coat of arm. This flag is the flag of the Ghana Armed Force, the tricep is nature. No individuals, everybody is having the flag. So this flag is for the three 
people. Right, okay, gotcha. This is not black. If it is black, then it's, a, it's an Asante flag. Uh -huh. Asante flag is black, yellow, green. Oh, okay. But this is blue, black, yellow, green. Okay. Very good. So you go into our long hall. Okay. Brigada Michel. This is the man who was named after Michel Camp. He was named after Michel Camp. This man was very intelligent, great, and wise. He was the first man to command the soldiers inside this place, at this place. Mm -hmm. He this is the sword, the commanding, and the belt, the helmet. This man was Ben. It's called Ben Smith. He was a civilian. He was not a soldier, but because of what he was doing, the soldiers gave him this medals to use, or they employed him, or pushed him into the military. Yeah. This is Bukari Bosi, the first curator to manage this place. Mm. If you are not an old soldier or retired soldier, you can manage this place. Very good. So this man went to the Second World War. He came That's back. Him right there, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. He came back alive with the men, so many soldiers he went with. They were also alive, but uh -huh. some were injured. Mm -hmm. Very good. At that time, they were barefooted. The British were punishing the Ghanaian soldiers in such a way that they were barefooted, and the British were wearing boots. So when they fought in the war, they had to fight bare. They had to fight barefooted. That time they gave them boots. Uh -huh. But while they are training them and stuff, uh -huh. they were barefooted. It wasn't easy because of the wondrous thing he did. Queen Elizabeth gave him this citation uh -huh. to award him because it's not easy to go on the war and all your guys or your soldiers you bring them back safely. Uh -huh. Very good. These two soldiers, officers. The British were not giving the Ghanaian soldiers boots. So these two soldiers were fighting with the British or the white men. Why are you wearing boots and we are barefooted? They were causing confusion. So the British were calling these two soldiers notorious. Uh -huh. And they gave them boots. You can see the boot was oversized boots, bigger than their leg. Uh -huh. So they were suffering, so they threw the boots away. And they prepared. So you can see these pictures. The pictures so clearly that they were barefooted. You use bandage on your leg and you walk barefooted. Very good. Barefooted. The first dramatic to lead during the Gold Coast time. Mm -hmm. Very good. To lead the band. Very good. You see the British men inside their boots, inside their boots, wearing boots. Ghanaians barefooted. I think of Rongo, the first soldier man to wear boots. Uh -huh. yes. The British were saying, you okay, want to punish you. Now we want to give you boots to wear. The boots that we are giving you, you wear it Monday, Friday, finish. So they were doing a graduation, like celebrating the boots they gave to them. Very good. The the flag you saw over there, uh -huh. the one tied it, getting right. to There's the flag inside here. This is how Kumasi was looking like in 1931. Where we are, the museum, this is the museum. Oh, wow. We have the Poku Trading. First, it was a supermarket. This tower is also there. Uh -huh. Very good. Every 11 11, we do ceremony to celebrate the death of our soldiers. Very good. These are the pictures of the royal family. Queen Mary, John the Fifth, John the Sixth, Elizabeth, Philip, and the current. Pure, pure evil. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, Elizabeth, right? Oh. All of them. All of them. Okay. <laughs> These are the CBS, Chief of Defense Staff. These people were the people I was telling you, sir. They are the soldiers. The president appoints them to look after the soldiers. So only our ex-president appointed a Navy chief of Navy man to be 
the defense staff. All of them are army. So he was a navy man. Very good. But this picture you see over here, this man, can you mention the name, this name for me? Kotoka. Kotoka. Uh -huh. Do you know any place called Kotoka? Oh, airport I came. Oh, okay. Yes. I, uh -huh. So the airport was named after this man. Okay. And okay. you are going to hear the history why this man was named after the airport. Okay. Very good. He was the second president, Ankara. Okay. okay. So we go to our <coughs> inside this room. You have this holes around the whole building. Uh-huh. So you can come here. One Sudaman train over here, or the one British man will be standing here. This place was thick forest. Uh -huh. So the Asantes will climb the big, big trees that were here uh -huh. and tie a rope on top of the tree. Uh -huh. They will come and lie down and shake the rope under. So the British man will say, No, I can see, I can see. The tree was shaking. That means the what? The British or the Santis are on top of what? The tree. So they will be shooting through the sniper post. So their bullets were getting finished. Their water, their food. Meanwhile, the Santis besieged the whole place. Uh -huh. This place was a typical forest. Thick, thick forest. Ah, now we can see a whole lot of buildings. Uh -huh. So they were shooting the Santis. That is where they had Upum Apima. If you kill thousand, thousand will come. Right. So they were killing the Asantes and the Asantes were bringing in more guys and this place, they received this place and the uh, British were friending some of the Asante women or the ladies. So they were feeding the girls with information. So the girls were collecting so many monies from the British. So they didn't want the Asantes to kill who? The British. So the British wrote a letter in French and gave it to one person to take it to Cape Coast to the governor over there to come and what rescue them over here. Mm -hmm. So the ladies find a way or a strategy to save them by telling the Asantes who have besieged this place that the British are saying or the men's British men's soldiers inside here are saying they will not pass here. They will pass here. So go and wait for them at this place. So they gave them a ladder pass at the back and ran away. So the time the governor from Cape Coast came to make sure that they don't kill them inside here, they have run away already. Uh -huh. yes. So you can see... So, oh, so basically the Ashanti women, Ashanti women, yeah. uh, they sold out. That's what we say. Yes. So they were loyal to the British. Very good. Did they get killed? No. You will not see them. They will run. Because I've given you in the information that the men or the British man inside here huh? killing our people. We've surrounded the whole place and they don't have nowhere to farm or nowhere to go, uh -huh. nowhere to pass. Okay. And we've given you the formation that, okay, we are the people, the ladies were the people close to the British man. Uh -huh. they, they sometimes give the formation and the formation is clear. So that's for the, for the killing of the British men over here, they huh? said, no. So the Asante women didn't want the Asante men to kill no, the British? Not all the Asante women. Uh huh, just some. Some who, okay. were, who were the boyfriends of the British soldiers. Very cool. Okay. Plan. Okay, they are helping us. Uh -huh. they are, the girls will be coming inside, they will be chilling with the British. Uh huh. They'll give them some yeah. money and they will give them information. Go and tell the, your people that we are doing this, we hate them doing this. They, they, they will go back and tell them. But the killing of them inside here, they plan that no, we can't wait for our people to kill them. So they gave them a ladder to pass. So the British could escape. Very good. Oh, that's not good. Mm. If not that, they will kill them inside here. No. So you can see this is a rare parachute uh -huh. that the Air Force used. Okay. And this gun was also used. Okay. Very good. Uh -huh.
the Kutoka Hall. Okay. The hall now has been displayed the pictures of the council who made the coup in 1966. You can see the councils here. Uh -huh. These people overthrown the first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. Kwame Nkrumah was traveling. And by the time he had a call, Kwame Nkrumah, don't come back to Ghana anymore. You are not the president. So this council overthrown him. Wow. This man. He traveled to where? Seychelles. Seychelles. No, no. No. He went to no. Gabon? Oh, no, no. He didn't go to Gabon. He went to, um... I think it was British. No. no. He traveled to one of the African countries. Yes. He went to Africa. He went to Gabon. No, not Gabon. No. I think he died in Gabon. No. It wasn't Gabon. It was, um... That, uh, the traveling was not the traveling he wanted. That. Where did he go yeah. exiled? Where was he ex exiled? Kwame Nkrumah, where was he exiled? No. It wasn't Gabon, it was uh. I think he went to um, a European country before. No, 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 it wasn't European. He died in African countries. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah which, which country was he exiled to, you know? I'll tell you. Later, okay, later, yeah. This is a free fight uh -huh. and Kotoka. These people were the bosses who planned the coup mm -hmm. to overthrow the Kapan Nkrumah. After they succeeded the coup, this man brought an idea. Okay, who should become the president? Then, let's go for a retired to the man called General Ankara. Mm -hmm. So he was the second president. He was appointed after the throne, overthrow of the Kapan Nkrumah. So after he was the, he became the president, Kutuka became the vice, and Afrifa became the second. Okay. People are saying, or oh, there was a rumor that FIFA was having some grievances with Kotoka. Why? Uh -huh. Because I've planned a coup cool with you. Why have we allowed ourselves to give this man the, the power right. to become the president? And you are the vice and the secretary. So Kotoka was killed by two officers, Yabua and Atta, wow. at where we have Kotoka International Airport. So because of Oh, who murdered? Who killed him? Uh, Yabua and Atta, two officers, so their men, okay. went to kill this man. He was killed at the airport. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. That is why the airport is named after this man. Oh. This man. Oh. Kutuka International Airport. Well, he had it coming. I mean, he started the coup against, Nana, against Kwame Nkrumah. It's, it's karma. He had it coming. Uh, he had it coming. <laughs> so after he was killed, yeah. he was afraid. The president was afraid. Yeah. So he stepped down and the FIFA became the third president. Okay. Yes. This coat of arm that you can see this man, Kotoka's head inside. People were saying Ghana belongs to Kotoka. Uh -huh. That is why they designed the coat of arm and put the head of Kotoka inside. And Ghana cannot belong to Kotoka. So they seize it and brought it to the museum. So just go on mess. They are going to chill. They are going to drink and stuff. So this is mess case of General Ankara, the president. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see he was very wide. So this is the waist. A big boy. A big man. Uh -huh. And a tiny man, Kotoka. The waist, Kotoka was very tiny. Uh -huh. very, but this man, they are saying this man was very wicked. Yes. Yes. Very wicked. <laughs> very wicked. We have the condemned cell and the detention cell as well. Okay. So we are going to the detention cell. The cell they were using to punish the soldiers. If you're a soldier and you beat your wife, you'll be brought here. If you don't go on duty, you'll be brought here. If you drink inside your uniform, you'll be brought here. So this is a room called the detention cell. And it's also attached with the regimental drums and jewels. This was the main entrance. This place, if you are able to pass here to, you are coming here. You are coming here to be punished. Mm. Two people in the room, only soldiers. Two people in the room. You'll be given food once in the afternoon. This place was dark. We provided this place with light. Mm -hmm. But first it was dark. It wasn't easy at all. We can see so even... Yes, one day. No, this is detention. detention okay. Yes, this is punishment. And they, that one was condemned. Okay. They were killing them yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. And this was a punishment. Yes, for the soldiers. This is a real leopard skin hmm. that was killed around the zoo. 
by the soldiers. And the drums, the person who play the big drum, or the bass drum, wear this and play the big drum. The one who play the snare or the side drum, wear this. This is the juve. It, sorry, the big girls. They were using the drummers were using the drummer, the one who leads the band. Those was the way he was dressing. The sash here, the cap he was using, the juve and the lanyard he was using. You can see how the soldiers were dressing. This is the old picture. How the one the British were leading us. The Jews they were using are here. Very good. So we are going to the hall that Ghanaians we normally feel proud. Why? Uh -huh. Because the pictures, uh, sorry, the red flag of the people we fought against is here. Very good. It's called the decoration room. I was telling you we fought against the Japanese. This is the flag we captured from the Japanese to show that we defeated them. We beat them mercilessly. If a flag of Canada now is falling down, a Sudan is supposed to go and hold it. Whether he is sick or dying, he's supposed to hold the flag. The flag is not supposed to drop or fall down. The flag rain is not supposed to beat the flag. So you can see some names inside. The names were names of their wives. You know, if they are going on war, probability that you not come back is high. So if there's any money, they will give it to your wife. So they wrote their wife's name inside. Yes. And this was their girlfriends and children. There's a name, their names are inside. All the Japanese soldiers who went or who came to the war. Okay. These are Italian medals. On the war front, if I'm able to kill you, I have to take something and present it for people to see that I killed you. And even doing that, if you come, you'll be on it or you'll be given a medal. Yes. So these were medals they presented, so many of them. This was on an aircraft, you can see, and the aircraft was blast before they could be able to take this. These are also medals, Shuda Italians. So we were able to retrieve all this from the Italians. This is the German flag. Mm. Yes. Ghana, we were able to beat, or not even Ghana, the Gold Coast soldiers trained us to beat the Germans. So you can see the German flag. Very good. We have the Italian flag. Very good. You can see the eagle of the Germans. This was being carried by one Sudaman at Lume Togo, where we were fighting with the Germans. The one of the Sudanese a German were carrying this. Why? Because it's their symbol. Very good. The eagle. The British were teaching the Ghanaians how to read and write. This is the building they were using to teach them how to read and write. Yeah. This is their toilet. This toilet is for the uh, soldier man who is a British man. And this for the Ghanaian soldier inside here. Uh -huh. This is their ammunition room. The yeah. room they were con it was containing their bombs, their rifles and stuff. This is the room. Another one is also over there. Okay. We have a gun here that was designed by Martin Perry. This gun was used to tell time. Yes, whenever it is 12 o'clock, this gun will shoot. Boom! 
to far, far, far places you hear this gun. Uh -huh. The Asantis were treated and they were not using time, you know, they were using their shadows uh -huh. to tell time whenever it is 12 o'clock. So the British found out that the Asantis are suffering. So they designed this gun for them in order when it is 12 o'clock it will shoot. Boom. Uh -huh. So the traders will hear, oh, Premuato. Uh -huh. So it is 12 o'clock, we have to start packing our things and stuff. This Paul Martin Perry, we the Asantis, we couldn't mention Martin Perry. That is why whenever it is 12 o'clock, you can hear the news uh, broadcaster saying, okay, because of Martin Perry, they say Premuato. Very good. This is another detention cell. No, oh, wow. Hey, sorry, this is condemned cell. So you come here to die? Kill him, yes. So how did they kill them? They just leave them in here to die, or they just killed them and put it in here? They will not use gun or rifle to bullet you. Uh -huh. What they will do is, they will line up you here, mm -hmm. they will use the bottom of the gun to beat you mercilessly. Mm -hmm. You will reek. You can't do anything. You will not be given food to. Mm -hmm. You will be brought here. You will be here if you are 10 people, 10 people. If you don't hear any noise, or they have some time. That they think you can't survive. Mm -hmm. So they wait till that time they will come and open all of you will be dead mm -hmm. or you will have your dead bodies here. Uh -huh. So they will come and take you and go and bury you. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. You don't want to waste bullets. You want to kill you physically. Uh -huh. That's meant to die. Mm -hmm. I was telling you the British took only one key uh -huh. to their hometown. This is the door. Uh -huh. The original door. It's not easy. You know, this, a room like this was containing an ammunition. So they wrote at the back here, danger, uh -huh. meaning there was a bomb here. This door was locked in 91 years. This door was broke in 1987. After broken this door, okay, during that time, or oh, while the British were here and stuff, this door was locked. So they were thinking there was a bomb here. Even in 1986, people visiting here were thinking, oh, there's a bomb at the museum. So definitely one day one day, Kumasi will blast because the British are putting bomb and lock the door and send the key away. And this door was not easy to broke it. Uh -huh. Big thick steel. So this door was being detected by Sugarman. The den curator. Mm -hmm. It was the den curator. Okay. This door was being detected. And after detecting this bomb, this this room, this point out that there were no bombs. So they decided to break this door. They broke this door and find out there was full of gold. 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 <laughs> yes. Wow. The British were thinking Ghana, we can't gain independence. Uh -huh. So they will send some of the gold and come back again for the rest. Mm -hmm. But we had independence and they couldn't come again. Uh -huh. So this door was broke in 1897. After breaking this door, we found out the huge gold, they took it to the nearest bank, Bank of Ghana. Uh -huh. And it spent 18 years at the Bank of Ghana. In 2005, under the ex-ex-ex president, John Ajekunku was presidency, he saw that the gold here was full of bangles. Meaning the gold the British were collecting from the Asantis were kept here. Uh -huh. So he took it to the palace. So during 2005, the current king, Otun Fo Osetitu, was announced six times rich because of the gold they took to him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, wow. Yes. Wow. Uh, would you like to go to where the plane is or we should end the tour? Um. Yeah. A plane, a plane that Lieutenant J. John Rollins used to pass under Adomi Bridge and the personal helicopter of him. Of who? Flight Lieutenant J. John Rollins. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Yeah, let's see okay. it. So this is John Rawlings' yes. airplane? Yes. Or fighter jet or just airplane? Is, that... is it a fighter jet? Yes, private. Fighter jet? Yes. So I mean, it shot missiles? Yes. Okay. For him. Okay. And this is the personal helicopter too. Okay. It was using. Mm. Mm. 
Oh. I see. Uh -huh. It's a cake, but yeah. you can see so many things how the helicopter inside look like. It contains eight people. Mm -hmm. Very good. So Lieutenant George Rollins were using this after he saw that no. It's okay. Do not use it again. Uh -huh. It was sticking to the museum. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very good. So you can see we have so many raffles inside our barracks uh -huh. that we can't display all of them here. Okay. We, have to, we have to display a few for us to tell stories about it. Very good. So this jet was a history uh -huh. because nobody could use a jet to pass under a bridge. Uh -huh. And this bridge, this jet was used to pass under the Adomi Bridge. Wow. Yes. So Lieutenant David Wallace did massive job and he was respected for doing that. It was a shock. And the first ammo car is a personal ammo car for him as well. This uh -huh. is on it. Uh -huh. it's inside the Achimota ship. Yeah. The was telling you about that. Right Lieutenant John Wallace was using the okay. personal Amoka. He was using yeah. Yeah. So that will be the end yeah. of our tour. Uh, I was gonna say tell people your contact information. So when they come to Kumasi. They can, they can look you up and you can show them around. Like your Facebook, WhatsApp, or whatever. Go ahead and, go ahead and share it. My personal. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. My personal name is Eric Nyami and I'm a tour guide at Ghana Armed Force Museum. My Facebook account is Nana Buanti. You can log in to search for me. And my email address is Nana Buanti at Nana Buanti 164 at gmail.com. Perfect. Very good. My right. number can be 0540. Nine six nine three four zero. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, that concludes our tour of the uh, Armed Forces Museum of Ghana. Uh, you know, I know. I guess media they like to downplay or minimize the contribution of African uh, soldiers in World War One and World War Two, but we're you know starting to get some more history of it. Uh, thank you guys. You know, continue to watch the other videos. Dinosaur Samir, search for Uhuru. Till next time, peace.